pick a card, any card. So what we're doing is, Anne got these awesome cards. We thought we would ask each other questions to get to know us a little bit more. All right. How well would you get along with someone exactly like you? Oh, I'd get along great with someone like me. Exactly like me. You don't think I would get along with someone like me? No. I don't think I would get along with someone like me. What? Mm -mm. I think I would innately be in competition. Not necessarily a purposeful competition, right? Well, I've always said, man, I wish I could have two of me. Yeah. So I could do more. And Yeah, I like me too, but I don't know that I, I would like. as much as I like me. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not a person who has a lot of friends. Shut yeah, no, I'm not. I have a lot of I people think, who I'm friendly with. I think but that's I don't what makes know. us good together. Yeah. I've been blessed with really great people. I mean, I guess there's people who I, I consider friends and they consider me a friend. It's not that I'm hanging out with them and like well, hold on. life, you, life yeah, happens. You work, yeah. Yeah. married, kids, podcast. Yeah. You fly, uh, yeah. You know, I often say, you know. you. So I should stop doing a podcast. Focus on friends. Yeah, I would still <laughs> be, kidding. you know, I'd still be your friend. No, I know that. What is something you could do five years ago that you can't do today? Hmm. Other women. <laughs> no, that's bad. That's bad. Um, well, I had kids five years ago. I was going to say, like, there were things that I could oh, do pre kids. I got it. And not being funny. Can't ski. Okay. I can't do a sea do. Uh, five years ago, I could. I Horseback riding. I feel like I can do more now. I was going to say a split, but I can still do a split. So five years ago, where were you? I could say I was 30 in my 30s. There you go. Five years ago. I can't say well, you can. I you'd can. just be lying. Yeah, that's true. All right. That okay. was a good one. Fill in the blank. When I am angry, I tend to blank. If it was the older version of me, I had a really hard time with not crying inappropriately. My husband would say I talk like Minnie Mouse because the more angry I get, the higher pit and all of a sudden I'm totally And he's like, what is going on there? You sound like Minnie Mouse. But I become I become almost like robotic in in because I become very, very fact driven and wanna be able to get a get a point across. I want to hear what you have to say. But um, I think that's been my uh, adaption to prevent myself from crying. Mm. So I just going to shock people. I get quiet. I withdraw. Um, many years of therapy. Um, now I can actually communicate, but when I would get angry, I'd shut down. Yeah. Uh, I was known as kind of a runner, you know, just, you know, and if you, you know, uh, they say silence is golden, but in a relationship or friendships or work, sure. not so much. So sure. I realized through, you know, other people's eyes that me being quiet or just saying, okay, uh, not good. Yes. Not good. So I was probably the greatest uh, gasoline carrier. So when someone was upset, I would just say, really? And just keep throwing gasoline on it uh, by, by avoiding. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. So as you're hearing us asking and answering, I would encourage you to do the same thing because that question gets to self-awareness and self-management, right? Which is, which is really the foundation of emotional intelligence. Um, so always reflecting on self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, social management. Uh, and so when you start to kind of get into those different things, like when I get angry, mm -hmm. how do I respond? Mm -hmm. That is self-awareness. And then that response is self-management. So if you recognize, like you just described, mm -hmm. inappropriate response, how I described, inappropriate response was crying. And I'm still working on that, right? Sure. And, and I think that that is still probably for yourself, probably still a default, right? When you said about the silence, I was one of those people too, uh, like, like because I didn't want to cry, so then I would just shut down, yeah. right? And so yeah. that was that was an intermediary before I got like this. Right. Um, and so I do think that there are still certain situations where my reaction still is not the right one. But I do think that that is so important because without that skill set and recognizing how it is influencing, and you your response actually acknowledged all four components, self-awareness, self-management, the social awareness, how I'm seeing others and how they're seeing me. And then the social management, I'm fueling the fire or I'm trying yeah, to so help. I'll, I'll share out. this. Uh, you know, I often joked, but seriously, I, I've been married twice before. But one of the things that we do very well is we started therapy before and we've had life lessons before. We both have triggers. We have, you know, a past. And so I said, let's go to therapy to start our relationship. Now, the very first time we ever walked to our therapist's office, therapist's like, what, what are you, I've never, 
Usually you come when yeah, hair is on fire. I've never seen a proactive therapist. My background, session. I was a therapist and I had failed marriages and I had my equal part in those. Instead of going to the therapist when things are at their almost wit's end, why don't we start ahead of time? And I can promise you yeah. that it, it is about communication. Do I get angry? Do I get frustrated? Yes, but it's how I respond. What's fascinating about that too is that it introduces a third party, even when the third party isn't there, yeah. to help in neutralizing. Perhaps the reflex is to go into the quiet mode. Yep. It invites your partner to then say, Matthew, remember Dr. So-and-so said that we should try this when we're in a situation. And and that I think is is so interesting because how do you then... Well, show up to therapy in two weeks and be like we have homework there are sheets that we put up in our closet and read things on fighting correctly you know i have a past of not fighting fair i didn't realize that mm -hmm. until i read through this it, it's been really unique but it's taught me how to respond sure and so again part of that social awareness and and really you know um being honest and vulnerable and, but at the same time, I have my feelings sure. and you have your feelings. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. this has been fun. I love these cars. We're definitely going to have to do more of this in the future. And guys, go to our podcast, go to Sleeping Around the Podcast, like, and subscribe. We are so grateful yeah. uh, for you guys, but just getting to know us a little bit more and uh, we appreciate it. So thank you for sleeping around with Dr. Anna Matthew. Yeah. We're just keeping it between sleep friends. <laughs>